Hey guys, what's up, it's Eiflin here, and welcome to my top 10 melee weapons video for 2018. Now, this is going to be kind of a weird list because this is more just personal preference, what I use on a regular basis to get things done. So, like, for example, my number 9 is the Venka Prime, and I use that to, like, complete Riven Mod challenges where I have to get, like, a high combo counter and hold it for a certain amount of time. Um... You know, I'm, I'm adding things like that on the list because whenever it comes to melee weapons, right now as it stands, Zaws are the, like, usually the best in class. So if you take a look at the sword category, uh, just, just for swords in general, like, the best sword that you can get in the game right now is a Zaw. So that's a craftable melee weapon, which you can go to the uh, the Plains of Eidolon or Cetus and then get a bunch of Zaw parts for one together, and then it'll have like some of the best stats in game, right? And plan you for all the right parts together. Uh, you know, they are currently the best in class melee weapons. So this list is pretty much all personal preference and just stuff that I use that have some unique traits or that will allow me to do things, you know, a little bit more efficiently. So my number 10 is the war and this may seem like a weird pick, but this one is just on this list simply because I like how this thing looks and I like how this thing feels to use. It's just one of those really good weapons that, uh, you know, I, I really enjoy using. So you get this from the second dream quest. Well, you get the blueprint for it or you're able to get the blueprint for it after the second dream quest, and you get it from killing the Shadow Stalker whenever he spawns into your mission. So you need to have a Broken War to actually craft this, and uh, it's a pretty good weapon. Whenever it was released, it actually had the highest damage of any melee weapon in the game, I think, uh, but that has been replaced now by the Archetitron, which is a hammer, not a sword, and I'll get into detail why I like just the sword in general uh, in a second, but it's, it's more to do with the stance cleaving whirlwind and uh, how often you can get crits and stuff like that. So let's just go ahead and spawn this guy in. Level 150, make ourselves invincible, and uh, I'll show you guys the basic build for what it is that we're doing. So on most of the weapons that I'm using today, I'm using blood rush body count builds. So that is just, you know, Prime Pressure Point, obviously, Blood Rush, and then Body Count together to keep your combos up, and also get give you a lot of crit chance. Organ Shatter for the crit damage, Life Strike, so we can keep our health. We have Fever Strike and Shocking Touch here. Uh, you can throw on Prime Fever Strike if you really want to, if you have the space, and then Berserker here as well uh, to up your attack speed. It looks like someone has actually joined my lobby. Hello, Vortex. Uh, could you leave, please? Okay. Yep, yep, troll a lol. Yep, okay, but but bye bye. That 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 was that was ten out of ten. I'm just gonna keep that in there. But yeah, <laughs> the Cle Cleveland Whirlwind on uh the war makes it really insane for just getting those crits. So if you just go ahead and uh, do your basic combo and then allow your Warframe to do the little spinning animation here, you can actually get a lot of crits in and build your combo counter really fast. Uh, you can do this up to eight times and just, uh, you know, basically shred any enemy. So, yeah, enemies die pretty quickly with this build, and uh, it's just a very good melee weapon, at least in my opinion. So if you're in the if you're in the heavy swords, I definitely recommend picking up the war because it's just one of those weapons which, I mean, it's really fun to use. It looks really cool, so fashion frame, and just, just in general, it's a really cool weapon. Uh, but next up, we're moving on to the Venka Prime, like you guys already know. There's a multitude of reasons why I like this weapon. One, it looks cool. Two, I can fit a full build on it without having the forma. Three, it's really good for doing that Riven challenge where you have to build your combo counter up to three times combo counter and then holding it for like 30 seconds, I believe. So it's just like one of those weapons that have that has a lot of multi-purpose, I guess. So, you know, body count, blood brush, shock in touch, fever strike, organ shatter, berserker, life strike, prime pressure point. This is going to be a staple across all the crit weapons that I use in this video. So basically the same thing. This guy will die relatively quickly. Just go ahead and start beating his ass. Build up your combo counter, and the faster you build up that combo counter, then the faster the enemy is going to die. So we actually get into orange crit territory with the blood rush body count build, and I'm also trying to angle it so that I don't push all the enemies off the uh, off the map. So it's not like it's the most damaging melee weapon in the game. Like you, you definitely kill uh, enemies faster using something like the War or the Galatine, I have more people joining. Uh, you definitely kill people faster using things like the War or the Galatine or whatever, but the uh, the Venka are just pretty cool. <laughs> Could you leave, please? Man, this, this is this is what happens whenever you leave your thing on, uh, on public. Okay, 
So next up, we're moving on to the Hyrudo, which is another one of my favorite uh, melee weapons in the game. So the reason I like these ones so much is because of the uh, the built-in health steal that you get. So as you're beating down on enemies, it's the exact same build, by the way. As you're beating down on enemies, um, you're actually going to be getting health back on crits, I believe. So, you know, it's really good just for, like, keeping your health up. And it also means that you can replace life strike on this build to get more damage like if you're building for like just general general usage and utility i get most of my damage from using this weapon from locking enemies down and doing the little finisher animation on them as you can see so like i said not like it's the best melee weapon in the game but as you build your combo counter and stuff like that the damage will scale up and it's just like a really good weapon just for keeping your health up and just in general melee usage right so if you just want to run around and uh basically like, kick people off the map which you can do with this so let's check this out here we go whoop there you go it just kind of flies across the map it's pretty dope so yeah it's just another one of the reasons that i like the weapon it's not like it's um one of the best melee weapons in the game that's that's what i'm gonna say with every single melee weapon on this list but you know hirudo really cool i really like it next up is the lesion this is one of the better melee weapons in the game but like I said, Zaws are usually better, and the reason this one is so good is because of the mod called Condition Overload, and it's high status chance on this weapon as well. So this actually has like a built-in Berserker, but uh, I build this for status chance, so we go Prime Pressure Point, Prime Fury, Prime Fever Strike for more, obviously, Toxin Damage, Violent Scourge, Voltaic Strike, Volcanic Edge, Vicious Frost. That allows you to proc your Crucive and your Blast the more status effects you have on an enemy. Then the faster they're gonna die because condition overload gives you a damage boost based off the amount of status procs you have equipped or you know basically active on the one enemy at a time so we just go ahead and uh be done in this guy you'll see that he dies super fast this guy's level 150 keep that in mind and we killed him insanely quick there with the legion you can get better results if you're building a zaw that has high status chance as well but you know this is uh you know a really solid weapon so let's just not do any combos here and just kind of beat down with the e combo quick attack and you see how fast he dies you don't even need to build anything like blood brush body count you can definitely uh if you wanted to throw blood brush body count in this build you can 110 percent do that but uh you know just using this build it, it's good enough right because they die super fast and you know it's insane so pick it up use it lesion is definitely worth it at least in my opinion and uh, yeah, I, I love the weapon. But moving on to some more weapons that I think are not better, but just worth mentioning and for a different reason. So this is my Redeemer. And I use this whenever I'm doing like Orc and Derelict Defense, or not Orc and Derelict Defense, but Tower Defense. And I'm using this to get health back, if that makes any sense. So. This is a high ribbon disposition, so you could definitely get a ribbon that will give you like a lot more damage and make this weapon a lot better. But for the sake of this video, this is the basic build that I'm using. I could maybe throw on Prime Fever Strike if I had enough space. If I form it again, I could throw it on. You could build Blood Brush Body Count on this if you really wanted to, if you're just kind of like, you know, shooting an enemy. But the real reason I use this, like I said, is to get my health back at a range. I guess so like if I'm playing as frost and I need to get my health back but I don't want to leave my bubble then I can use the redeemer to shoot out of my bubble while channeling and get all my health back right so it's not the most damaging weapon in the game by any means but it is a really good melee weapon just for the utility of getting your health back so what you can do is just hold your charge attack like so and then chain it together and keep on firing at the enemy you're not dealing a lot of damage and the closer you are to the enemy the more damage you're going to deal but keep in mind life strike takes a percentage of the damage you deal and then gives it back in uh to your health right so if you deal like a thousand damage whatever five percent of a thousand is then you're going to get that back to your health right so most warframes don't have like really high health pills unless you're talking about someone like ash so as long as you're dealing like a high enough damage number then you're going to get that health back to uh your warframe which is pretty nice so Let's go ahead and demonstrate that. I'll play like a frame like a Naros, and then, you know, we'll just get all of our health back with like one trigger pull or whatever. So go ahead, fashion frame this up, make sure it's the right color. There we go. Spawn in a new enemy. So we're going to kill this guy. I'm going to make myself not invincible. going to stimulate. 
let's just go ahead and uh, get my scarab armor up here so I don't like get melted by him. There we go. Get all my health back. So we're gonna take a little bit of damage. I I really need to uh, set this to private. Oh my word! Can you please leave? I am so sorry about everyone joining, but yeah, this is just something that happens while you're a YouTuber. So I'm gonna take the damage. Okay, you're gonna damage me, and we're just gonna channel. We're gonna shoot at him. We're gonna get our health back. So we're getting like a hundred health back at a time, which is which is decent. It's based off the amount of damage that you're dealing to the enemy. So. Just keep on uh, dealing damage and you get your health back. So, of course, that's going to take energy and stuff like that. But, you know, it's it's still a useful utility tool. And I like it. You can also, like, do the exact same thing in the other gun blade. But the Redeemer, in my opinion, it, it's like the middle ground. Because you can get it as a newer player. And it's really decent as a newer player for killing the Raptor boss. And it's just, you know, it's one of those weapons that I recommend the players. And I really like using. So, you know, it, like I said... This by no means is like the best weapons in the game video. This is just like weapons that I like to use because they have unique quirks. So, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, moving on from the Redeemer, we're moving on to the Galatine Prime. So same reason I like the war, except this is like a war that has, you know, it's based more on slash damage. So it's just going to be more damaging in general. Exact same builds. Uh, of course, if you can throw on Prime Fever Strike, which I can, go ahead, throw on Prime Fever Strike because that's just going to give you more overall damage. And we're going to kill cat, uh, kill guys really, really fast. Or not even guys, because you guys keep on giving me shit for saying that the heavy gunners are girls. And, or, yeah, that, that makes total sense. The heavy gunners are girls. You, you guys are right. But I keep on calling them guys. Honestly, I don't think it matters that much. Because they're corrupted, and they don't have any feelings anyway. And, plus, they're a video game character. So... Again, I don't feel like it matters that much, but that's a topic for another video. Someday I'm going to make a video being all like, yeah, I, I, I'm aware that the heavy gunners are girls. I get it. I understand, but I don't care. <laughs> Moving on, uh, we're going to the Broken War. Broken War is one of my favorite weapons because it looks cool and it deals a lot of damage. This is because of the Crimson Dervish stance, which gives you 300% extra damage on your first combo. You can also proc finishers with it, so... See him build blood rush body count, and uh, the guys are just are the girls. The girls are just going to die very fast. Okay, so just just pay attention, right? We're gonna kill the girl just by spamming E. So slash procs, got a berserker procs in there. We get the finishers in there as well, and we just kind of kill them very quickly. So. Broken War is an insane weapon. You get the finishers, you get the 300% extra damage, you get the Blood Brush Body Count combo building up. It's a really good weapon. But again, like I said, Zaws are top tier right now whenever it comes to melee weapons. So, or not melee weapons, but the sword category, the um, the polearm category, you know, most categories are dominated by Zaws right now, implying you're building them right, which will we'll make a video later on talking about like how to build your Zoss correctly so there's that but uh moving on we're going to the Orphus Prime Knight and this is this is going to be a weird pick because I mean like the Orphus Prime it's not the most damaging um you know pull arm in the game but it is like a really good pull arm which I enjoy using and I recommend to other players and there's a, just a lot that you can do with it really but really what I do with it is I just use my my spin the win so, with my uh, Prime Reach, Maiming Strike, Fever Strike, you know, all that stuff. And I kind of just keep on doing this over and over again. And then the bad guys die. Not using the Orphus for, like, level 150s, as you can see. Because, like, it takes way too long to kill. And you really have to have your combo super high. And then you start to hit the really high numbers, like that. You see how we just hit, like, 25,000 there, like, a second ago. That's besides the point. Um, it's not a weapon I use versus high-level enemies, but it's a weapon that I use for just generally running through missions and stuff like that. So this is the build that I was using. Uh, this is more for focus farming and stuff like that, rather than, you know, just killing high-level enemies. And I have six form on this because I mess around with the stances and stuff a lot. So 
yeah, you can do whatever you want with it. This is just the build that I use because it makes sense. Corrosive damage, uh, Blood Rush Body Count, Berserker, Mammon Strike, Prime Reach, Pressure Point. You know, pretty simple builds. But now we're moving on to one of my personal favorites, the Nakata Prime. The Nakata Prime deals a lot of slash procs, has knockdowns, uh, and I also use this. This is my Exalted Blade build, but this is my actual Nakata build, which I, I really like because Blood Rush Body Count and killing bad guys and them, them dying or bad girls or whatever. Just, just, just pay attention. Blind Justice combo, blocking combo. Spam E, knock them down, finish them, rinse and repeat, and they stay in a constant loop. Unless you like, you know, push them off the map like that, because I'm an idiot. But let's just go ahead and, uh, you know, simulate the guy or the girl. Don't get triggered. Simulate the girl again, and then kill, like so. Deal the Crusive procs, deal the slash procs, let them die. Easy peasy. Just keep on knocking him over. It's just good because it has that utility in there. You know, the knockdowns and the crits, the slash procs, crucifer procs, the really fast, like, attacks. It, it's it's a great melee weapon, and I definitely recommend picking it up. That, and it's, it's fashionable as well, so no reason not to get it, in my opinion. But, uh, yeah, once this guy dies, which he just did... We'll move on to the number one, which you guys probably already know what this is, if you've been paying any attention to Warframe at all lately. The Atarax. So, the reason this thing is insane is because of the, uh, the slash procs that you can get with it. So this is the build that I'm using uh, for just general killing high level enemies. Uh, and then my config B is what I use for farming focus. If you don't have Prime Fever Strike, you want to replace this for Northwind because that, uh, that's going to give you a plus 25% extra damage versus the heavy bombards, which you need to be one hitting whenever you're focus farming. So it makes sense to, you know, have something that's going to give you plus damage to the heavy bombards. But uh, other than that, there's no elements on this build because you're relying on slash procs and building up your combo counter and stuff like that to just kill enemies. So, um,. Or I'm gonna spawn in like, is it 20 level 150 heavy gunners? And you're just gonna see how fast this thing kinda shreds through the bad guys. So, um, yeah, it's kinda, kinda ridiculous. So, just, just, just pay attention. Here we go. So, just, just watch their health kinda deplete over time. Implying we don't die. But you can see that they're all dying. And it's really insane. You just get uh, red crit after red crit, crit after red crit after slash proc. So, the bad guys die, and they die very fast. And I'm gonna die very fast as well. So we're just gonna go ahead and die and respawn. But that's besides the point, you know. You keep that combo up, you proc those slash procs, these level 150 enemies, don't really stand a chance. They're all gonna die. There we go. He's dead. Guy has full health. Oh, now he has no health. So yeah, you can see why this thing is uh, kind of insane. The slash procs just kind of deal a lot of damage, and then that's that's pretty much it. So anyway, guys. That's it for my top 10 melee weapons video. Uh, I hope it wasn't too awkward because we have people joining and yeah, and Zaws are best whenever it comes to swords and full arms and stuff. So get those over the weapons that I showed in this video. But uh, other than that, Adorax trumps all. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.